when we took over the reins of the economy, ladies and gentlemen, at Boso, places like that were dead. Our AGC was producing what? Half or one third the current volume. One third the current volume. We have triple, triple AGC's goal. When we started off, we started off with nothing but one thing, the truth and integrity. The truth and integrity. And this is what has brought this country out of the darkness. Now that we are beginning to see the light, with the responsibility and the duty of accomplishing what we set out to do, do we want to see the club turn back? Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlings. Haven't been elected. Haven't been elected. To the High Office of President. To the High Office of President. Of the Republic of the The Republic of Britain. This victory is not a victory to sleep. It's not a victory for laziness. But it's a victory to work even harder. Kwame Nkrumah was not perfect. And I may be one of the most critical people about certain aspects of his government. But I will never deny him nor any man the praise for outstanding achievements and for Dr. Nkrumah in particular, the things that made him a great figure in history. On this 32nd anniversary of Ghana's Republic Day, we are laying Dr. Nkrumah's remains to rest at the site of his greatest triumph. The instability of Liberia is affecting the stability of the sub-region. It's making it difficult to attract investment. It's making it difficult, you know, to improve the image of Africa. So I'm suffering, not indirectly, directly, you know, both through the contribution of my troops to bring about stability and through the fact that, look, it's, it's, it's creating a wrong perception of Africa. So we have a moral obligation to do what we can to, to bring about the necessary stability. Because we're all being judged, all of us, despite the efforts we're making. But frankly, I just don't think it's uh, fair and right that uh, Liberia, that used to be, you know, a former colony of uh, America, you know, should have uh, degenerated into a carnage of that kind. No Western country lifted a hand to assist her. And yet she didn't actually need that much. But when it comes to the European th theater, the whole of Europe, NATO, the US, everybody pumps in all the necessary resources. Early this year, the world was struck, as you know, by a pandemic whose effects eventually affected every facet of our lives. Despite the interventions from state institutions to alleviate the plight of the underprivileged, there is still a lot to be done by all of us in our very own communities to support the most vulnerable groups. The health force across the country, some of whom have been infected with the virus, in the line of duty have taught us a sense of purpose, selflessness, commitment, dedication, and patriotism. I commend all health workers, as well as all other frontline workers, for proving equal to the task in this defining moment of ours. Fellow compatriots, we have hurt our own by institutionalizing corruption for far too long. Given a little few the access to a mass wealth at the risk of the livelihood of the ordinary people who are languishing in poverty and misery. I think yesterday I was citing an example of uh, three people in a room. By the following morning, one was dead. And the other two who were alive were arrested and taken to court. And as they were asking them, or as the court was proceedings were going on, the case was beginning to find one of them guilty. And uh, they were going to make a pronouncement on him. You know what he asked? 
The one who's alive, he and I, we come from the same village. We've sworn on the Bible, sworn on the Quran, sworn on the sword, and yet I'm the one being found guilty. Please, I beg the, 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 the judge, etc., take us to the village we come from. We have a shrine over there, and let us go and, and swear on that shrine and see whether I am innocent or he is the, he is the culprit, whether I am the murderer or he is the culprit. That's all the question I asked these Catholic priests. They could not answer me. Because they know. You're not going to swallow any poison. But they know that we don't fear that Bible. We don't fear that Quran. But when it comes to our shrine, that one we dare not joke with it. We'll go and tell the truth. The white man who brought the Bible into my country, your continent, the Muslim who brought whatever it is, He's the same person who has gone and invented the lie detector test, the chemical interrogation test. I would dare you to go and line up some of your finest policemen, some of your finest editors, some of your finest, what you call it, judges. Make any allegations against me, you included. Whatever questions you want to ask, take me through a chemical interrogation. I will be the one who will pass. I wonder how many of you will pass. You know something, Chief? If we can learn to be bold enough to, re to restore the value of truth in our society, then we will have justice. Without truth, we cannot get justice. We cannot get justice. And that's why we're suffering. Truth is so important. Do you know what Gandhi said? I don't need Gandhi to tell it to me. Gandhi said he was looking for truth in God, only to discover that God was in truth. How beautiful. How beautiful. Now the other version. Baba Habib Bedeno. Baba Habib Bedeno. Baba Habib Bedeno. In spite of all these, mm, but she's getting too fair. Mm? Tonight has been so good, so electrified, that I just have to, on behalf of all Ghanaians, and especially those of you who are here, say a big thank you for making this a night to remember. Ladies and gentlemen, when I saw her in my office a few weeks ago, I don't know what I said to her, how beautiful she was still looking. But after she left, I was commenting to someone that she's looking as beautiful as my wife. They have just refused to age, and they've left us to age and pray. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I don't know what the world would have been like without Lucy. 